Hi, I'm Lionel Falco with Spartan Controls. I'm in our education lab today to go through the basic steps required to run through your guided setup on a DVC 6200 series valve positioner using the AMS ValveLink Snap-on software. Like always, you want to make sure you wear your safety glasses and follow all safe work practices. Our first step is to ensure that our DVC is mounted correctly and that our feedback array is lined up. Lastly, we'll need to make sure our airlines are connected and that we have our regulator set 5 PSI above our operating range on our actuator. You can find that operating range right here on the nameplate. And if you have any questions about mounting your DVC or lining up your feedback array, there's a link in the description to another video to show you how to do that. With our airlines physically connected to our DVC, we can now apply our supply pressure and then check to see what our regulator is set at. With an operating range of 0 to 15 PSI on our actuator, we're going to want to see 20 PSI on our supply gauge. This one right here is set a little bit low, so I'm going to crank up my regulator right now. That looks good. Tighten down my lock nut. With our physical installation complete, we can now connect to the DVC with our valve link software. For me, I'll be using a USB heart modem. and a 24 volt loop calibrator. With the DVC fully connected to our computer, we can now go into our ValveLink software and start our setup wizard. The easiest way I found to do that is to right click on your tag and go down to setup wizard. Now, if your DVC was previously set to in-service, it will prompt you to take it out of service before moving on to the next step, as you can see here. So yes, I do want to change my service mode. And we will set it out of service. With the DVC now out of service, it's gonna ask us a series of questions about our assembly. First things first, depending on the generation of DVC you have, you may or may not see this question. It's asking us, what type of DVC are we setting up here? Is it a 6200 or a 6000 series? The easiest way to tell would be to check the nameplate of your DVC or to simply just look at the connection head on your DVC. If it's on the left side, as you can see in this small picture here, it's a DVC 6200. And if it's on top, it's a DVC 6000 series. Us today, we have a 6200. So I'm going to click next. What type of control do we want? Generally speaking, our customers use travel control, but if you have an AD and above diagnostic level, um, you will be given the option to have pressure recovery modes as well. And what this means is that on loss of signal from our travel sensor, it'll actually go into a smart pressure control mode where it acts like a smart I to P. Um, there is two options under this heading. There's either auto recovery or manual recovery. When our customers do choose to use this option, we always recommend using the manual recovery mode, which means that on loss of travel sensor, you have to repair it and then tell the DVC to go back into travel control mode before it'll go back to it itself. Otherwise, it'll automatically just go back into travel control mode if you have it on auto, um, which could lead to problems, especially if you have dead spots in your potentiometer or if your magnetic array is misaligned but kind of giving you a signal. Um, for us today, I'm just going to use travel control. Next, relay type. You will find this by just taking the cover off of your DVC. There will be a big sticker on your relay saying if it's an A, a B, or a C, and whether or not it's standard or low bleed. Um, for us today, I have a relay A, but you can see some of the options that are on the drop down menu here. Next, it's going to ask us to set our supply pressure. So we set our regulator a few moments ago to 20 PSI. So I'm going to enter that information here. Um, again, we want to set our regulator 5 PSI above the operating range of the actuator. Next, it's going to ask us what type of actuator we're actually setting our DVC up on. Um, in my case, looking at the actuator nameplate, I have a Fisher Controls, a 667, size 30. Um, but you'll see under these headings that there's many different options to choose from depending on what type of actuator you have. 
as well as many different sizes. Um, the DVC uses this information to choose a tuning set to start out on, um, as well as whether or not you have a volume booster or quick exhaust in your assembly. So I'm going to click next here. And lastly, it's going to ask us if we want to set our DVC back to factory defaults. If this is a new installation, um, this is great. It's going to erase everything in the DVC and start fresh. But if you, this is a DVC that's existing and you have custom settings in there, whether that be custom characterization, uh, custom cutoffs or alerting, um, you're going to erase all those settings um, and go back to factory defaults. So just use this on their first installation and after the fact, um, think about whether or not you want to be sitting back to your factory defaults or not. I'm going to click finish. It's going to send all this information to our DVC um, and uh, in our case set it back to our factory defaults as well as put our actuator information in there, our tuning information. Next it's going to ask us whether we want to run the tra auto travel calibration. Um, in most cases you'll choose yes. There are a few exceptions where you would say no. Those exceptions would be if you have a low powered and low CV solenoid tubed in between your DVC and your actuator. If you have an extremely large actuator that needs a large volume of air, or if you're working on a system that doesn't have hard stops, an example of that would be like a louver system, you'd want to say no and do a manual travel calibration. But since our system has two hard stops, I'm going to choose yes. And then we're going to click next. And it's going to start to move our valve and set our, our zero and our span on our assembly here. Now it's asking me if I want to set my pressure ranges high and low. This is used when you go into pressure control mode. Um, so I'm going to want to select yes if I ever choose to go that route. Um, in newer versions of the DVC and the software, it actually just does this automatically for you and just selects yes. And right now you can see that it's going to be mapping out the pressures as it leaves our valve seat as well as when we hit our fully open stop so that it can span that 4 to 20 milliamp input if you ever choose to go into or automatically go into the pressure control mode. And there we have it, our calibration is now complete. Our DVC will be fully functional at this point, um, but if you do have extra time it's always a good practice to go in and fill out your detailed setup and your spec sheet. Um, but otherwise, if you're just looking to get your DVC working, all you have to do at this point is put it back in service. Uh, I can do that easily in the top left here where this little light switch is that says instrument mode. Click on that guy. And we're going to set it back into service. It's always good practice now at this point to physically stroke your valve just to make sure that we're going to be hitting our set points and that everything's matching up. Um, so we always recommend you know, doing a 0, 25, 50, 75 and 100% steps just to make sure everything lines up and that it's fully functioning. And it looks good on my end. And that concludes the basic steps required to go through the guided setup on a DVC 6200 using the Valve Link Snap On software. Thanks for watching. Start your education journey today at SpartanControls.com forward slash education.